Chapter 40 They're going to kill them? All of them? Will asked incredulously. He and Umar were back at the Bedouin camp in a blind canyon to the north of Marshavar. Sharik, the Bedouin spy who had spent the day inside the crumbling walls of Marshavar, nodded in confirmation. That's the word among all the Tuolagi I saw. They're announcing it to the townspeople, making quite a big thing out of it, apparently. Umar pursed his lips thoughtfully. It's what you'd expect of Yusal, he said. Will turned his horrified glance on the Asik. But you said he'd rather make a profit out of them, he said, and Umar shrugged. Normally, yes, but perhaps this man Toshak has offered him something in return. Sharik had also told them about the presence of a Scandian in the Tuolagi camp, a man who seemed to be on equal terms with Yusal. Will realised that it must be Toshak. Svengel had told them weeks ago in Araluan that Iraq suspected Toshak was behind the betrayal. Umar continued now. And Yusal enjoys any opportunity to show how merciless he can be. It helps keep his victims subdued. A multiple execution here will be remembered for years. Word will spread and it will make his task easier next time he takes over a village. Will was thinking furiously. What could Toshak have offered the Tuolagi to convince him to give up the ransom money? There could only be one logical answer, he realised. He's found the warrant and Evelyn's seal, he said, almost to himself. Umar and Sharik regarded him curiously. The warrant? Umar asked, and Will explained quickly about the ransom payment they had arranged for Iraq. The Bedouin leader nodded agreement. That could be it. An amount like that would be enough to convince Yusal. Will looked to Sharik again. Did you get any idea when they might be holding the execution? On sixth day, the spy replied, the usual time is between the ninth and tenth hour if it's to be a ceremonial execution. Sixth day was the sixth day of the week. It was a non-working day, preceding seven day, the day for religious observances. On sixth day, Food and trade markets were set up in the town square and people relaxed and enjoyed themselves. At least, Will thought, they did when their town hadn't been invaded by a nomad raiding party. Then we have two days, Will said. Then a thought struck him. Will they cancel the market? Umar shook his head. Not at all. The more people out and about to see the executions, the better so far as Yusal is concerned. Will massaged his chin with his hand, his thoughts racing. That could work for us, he said abstractedly. The more people about, the easier it will be to infiltrate some of our men. I told you, Umar interrupted him, my men will be recognised as outsiders as soon as they speak. Yours, perhaps, Will replied. But aren't you forgetting we have 25 Aridi troops with us? He saw understanding in Umar's eyes and hurried on, his thoughts spilling out even as they formed. We could pair each one with one of your men. They could mingle with the farmers bringing in their produce for the market. Some could even go in the night before. The Aridi does all the talking so the townspeople don't react to a Bedouin accent. That'd give us 50 men inside the town. That could work, Umar agreed. Good work, Sharik, he said, realising that the spy was tired and there was no need to keep him from his bed. Go and get some food and rest now. Then he looked to where Hassan was sitting nearby, listening intently to the discussion. Go and find the Aridi lieutenant, he ordered. Bring him here. When the idea was explained to Alum, he agreed eagerly. The lieutenant had promised to Selethan that he and his men would survive the desert and come after him to rescue him. Now they had that opportunity being handed to them and he accepted instantly. 
He was also keen to meet with Usal again, this time with a weapon in his hand. But there was one detail that Will and Umar had overlooked. He gestured at Umar's kefir. You'll need to change those, he said. Your men all wear kefirs with a yellow and white check. The Marshavar people wear plain white. It was a good point. The Bedouin were all so accustomed to their headwear that it was easy to overlook it. Umar nodded his head several times, acknowledging the point. We'll make white ones, he said. We can use the cloaks of the men who aren't entering the town. Plenty of white cloth there. I think you should go in the night before, Will told Alum. I'll come with you. I need to look over the town and find a vantage point to shoot from. If anyone questions us, tell them to keep their mouths shut. You might also suggest that they can feel free to lend a hand when the fighting starts, Umar said dryly, and Alum shook his head in reply. Doubtful, he said. The townspeople won't raise a finger to defend themselves. And government officials aren't popular in towns like this. Odds are they are looking forward to the execution. Where do you want me? Umar asked. He had unconsciously deferred to Will's authority in this matter. Umar was a warrior whose skill lay in fast-moving cavalry raids in open country. The business of planning a close-quarters, street-to-street engagement in a town was new to him, and he sensed the young foreigner knew what he was talking about. You'll lead the rest of the force into the town when we give you the signal. Will quickly sketched a rough map in the dirt with the point of his sax. There's a small gully to the northern side of the town. We saw it this morning. He glanced up at Umar and the Asik nodded. He remembered the spot. We'll get your men into cover there the night before. It's only 70 metres or so from the town. We'll wait till they've brought Holt and the others out. He paused and looked at Alum for advice. How do they normally do that? All together or one at a time? All together, Alum told him. They'll bring them out a little before the ninth hour. By the way, Will said, feeling a morbid sense of curiosity. How do they plan to execute them? Will they be hanged? Umar shook his head. It's not the custom here. We use the sword. Usal will have them beheaded. A sick dread clutched at Will's stomach as the Asik said the words. He had a horrible image of Holt and Horace and Evanlin kneeling before the headsman's sword. Evanlin! His stomach churned at the thought of it. His breath came faster and he closed his eyes, trying to blot out the horror of it. What if I fail? He heard the question echoing in his mind. What if I fail? He felt a firm grip on his hand and opened his eyes. Umar had leaned closer to him and had placed his hand over Will's. We're not going to let it happen, he said. There was a conviction in his voice that eased the sudden horrified panic that had gripped Will. His breathing slowed and he steadied himself, nodding in gratitude to the desert warrior. Umar saw confidence returning to the young man's eyes once more, and he released his hand. Do you have any thoughts about where you'll position yourself? Umar asked. Will nodded. I'm thinking on one of the watchtowers along the north wall. He'd need a position with a good overview of the market square, where the executions would take place. And he'd need an elevated position so that he'd have a clear shot. Yusal would probably concentrate his men in the immediate area of the execution site to stop any trouble. He wouldn't be expecting it to come from a hundred metres away. Good idea, Umar agreed. He and Alum both regarded the young man with interest. Umar had seen the accuracy of Will's shooting. Alum had seen Holt and Gillen's skill. If the young ranger was half as good as his companions, it would make for an interesting morning, he thought. You plan to shoot Yusal then? Alum asked. He was, in fact, hoping that he might get the chance to deal with the Tuolagi leader. 
but he realised he wouldn't be too disappointed if Yusal ended up on the wrong end of an arrow. Will chewed his bottom lip thoughtfully, staring down at the plan of the town he had sketched in the sand. Probably, he said, my first priority will be the executioner. He's not getting anywhere near my friends. I'll want our fifty men to mingle with the crowd, as close to the execution site as possible. As soon as the executioner's down, they can keep the Tuolagi busy until Umar and his men arrive. I'll keep Holt and the others covered in case anyone else decides to try his luck as an executioner. If Yusal's still around, I might arrange to spoil his day. I'll need a sign so I know when to attack, Umar pointed out. One of my men is the company bugler, Alum replied. As soon as he sees Will shoot the executioner, he can sound the signal. That should do it, Will said. But let's cut a few corners. Keep watch on the tower. Once you see me climbing up to it, start moving your men out of the canyon. Nobody will be watching in that direction. They'll be watching proceedings in the market square. Right. All three men realised they were staring at the rough map in the sand while their minds went over the details. It was a relatively simple plan, Will thought, and that was a good thing. Simple plans were less likely to go wrong. Umar looked up and studied the young man's face. If you're going in the night before, we might need to darken your face a little, he said. He took Will's face between finger and thumb and turned it from side to side, studying it in the moonlight. Will was tanned after his time in Arida, but his skin was nowhere near as dark as the average Bedouin. His brown hair and dark eyes would pass muster, but not his complexion. Maybe we can use a little café to darken your skin, he said thoughtfully, then added with a grin, It's a pity your nose isn't bigger. Will grinned, remembering his unintentional insult when he had regained consciousness in the desert to find Umar bent over him. Then the Asik turned to Alum. You'd better brief your men, Captain. I'll pick out twenty-five of my best warriors to go with them. They can start pairing off and getting to know each other tomorrow. Alum started to rise, then hesitated. Captain, he said, I'm a lieutenant. Umar shook his head. I just promoted you. You might have to throw your weight around with the townspeople, and nobody ever listens to a lieutenant. Alum allowed himself a smile at that. Too true, he said ruefully. Too true.